Hello everyone, my name is Anjir Deja. I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present all the solutions of the weekly contest 297. Also, in case if you have any doubt understanding these questions or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to drop a message on the Telegram group or the Discord server of Coding Decoded. Both the links are stated below. The question that I have chosen to solve first is minimum path cost in a grid. So here in this question, we are given a grid of size M cross N. It consists of all distinct integers starting from 0 up till m into n minus 1. Also, what we need to do in this question, we need to identify the minimum cost for the path that starts from any cell in the first row and it ends at any cell in the last row. So this is very important that the initial starting point would be any cell in the first row and the terminal row would be the last row and it could be any cell across it. For example, here in this case we are given a grid that has values 5 3 4 0 2 1 and we are also told the move cost that means for moving from this particular cell to this particular cell the cost is of 3 units for moving from this particular cell to this particular cell the cost is 14 units similarly for other cases it is also specified what we need to do we need to identify that particular path that leads to overall minimum cost and here in this example it would be 5 to 0 0 to 1 and the cost associated with this particular path would be equal to 17 units. So I'll be walking you through the algorithm, how it is coming as 17 and it's not a very difficult question. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward question and I promise you guys, you'll also feel the same towards the end of the video. Just remember we are given the grid values, we are given the move cost values and we just need to manipulate over these two to arrive at the result. Let's quickly walk through the coding section and see how it, this algorithm is actually working out. Lead code 2304 minimum cost, minimum past cost in a grid. So let's hypothetically assume that there are three columns in the grid that is given to us and we are hypothetically trying to reach at a particular grid in the next row and it has the grid value given by the, let's assume the variable grid val and the cost for reaching so far for this particular cell is C1, the cost for reaching this cell so far is C2, the cost for reaching this particular cell is C3. And we are also told the move cost moving from this particular cell to this one, moving from this particular cell to this one, moving from this particular cell to this one. And it is given by M1 in this case, M2 in this case and M3 in this case. So let's try and identify the equation that will tell us the cost for reaching this particular cell that I have highlighted just now. It would be equal to grid value. So I have written grid value here. This is what it is definitely going to be part of the answer plus minimum of C1 plus C2 sum of these two or minimum of C2 plus M2 or minimum of C3 plus M3. So we have to identify these three values C1 plus M1, C2 plus M2, C3 plus M3. And we have to pick the one that has least overall value and that will be added to the grid value and it will tell us the cost for reaching this particular cell. We will be doing this for the entire grid that we have and the result is then pretty simple and straightforward. Once we reach the final row and once we have calculated the cost for reaching each cell in the final row, we will we'll be iterating over through that row and we will be identifying the minimum value that exists in that final row and that would be the final answer. Let's talk about the time complexity of this approach. The time complexity for this approach would be equal to how many cells are there in our grid. The total number of cells is order of n into m. And for calculating the cost for each cell, how many iterations are needed? Let's go back to the previous case. It would be equal to the number of columns that we have. So the total complexity would become the total number of cells that is n into m into number of columns that we have that means order of n. So the total time complexity for this approach is equal to n square into m. And the space complexity for this algorithm is order of n into m because we are calculating the cost associated with each cell. Also, let's quickly walk through the coding section and I'll exactly follow the same steps as I have just talked there, the same equation that I just talked about and you will yourself align with me that it's not a very tough question. Let's shoot for the coding part.
So here I've created a cost matrix of size M cross N that will actually store the cost associated for reaching each and every cell of our input matrix. And by default, uh, for the 0th row, the cost associated would be equal to the grid value in the 0th row. This is what are we doing over here. Set the cost for the 0th row. Now let's start the iteration starting from the first row from first row till the last and we are iterating cell by cell uh, moving in row wise direction followed by column wise. The next question that we are targeting is fair distribution of cookies. So here in this question we are given an array that represent cookies and we are also given an integer value k that simply means that we have these many number of children. We want to distribute these cookies among the children and it is also given that all the cookies in the same bag must go to a single child and it cannot be split across. What we need to do, we need to identify the minimum unfairness of all the distributions. The question itself says you need to identify all the distributions and then you need to identify the minimum unfairness that exists among all the possible distributions. This is what we are exactly going to do. And in order to complete the understanding of the question, let's go through the definition of unfairness. As per the question, the unfairness of a distribution is referred to as the maximum total cookies obtained by the single child in that particular distribution. If it looks confusing, don't worry, I'll explain you in the presentation. So let's quickly hop on to it. Lead code 2305, fair distribution of cookies. So let's try and understand the question. So we have a cookies array. Let's take the same example that was specified in the question. And uh, it is equal to 8, 15, 10, 28. And in among how many students do we need to distribute these cookies? There are only two students. Let's call this A and B. And let's hypothetically assume that in one possible distribution, the A student only gets the bag that has eight cookies, while the B student gets the bag that has 20, 10, 8, 15 cookies. So what would be the unfairness degree for this particular scenario? It would be equal to the total sum of the maximum of total sum of cookies that either goes to A or B. So what is the total sum of cookies that A gets? It is equal to 8. What is the total sum of cookies that B gets is equal to 20 plus 10 is 30, 30 plus 8 is 38, 38 plus 15 is equal to 53. So the unfairness for this particular distribution would be equal to the maximum value among these two. So the answer for this would be equal to 53 for this particular distribution. And what we need to do, we have to minimize this value. So let's walk through another possible distribution. So here in this case, uh, we have distributed uh, 8, 10, 15 bag cookies to child A and the child B gets 20, 10 and 8 bag. So let's calculate the total number of cookies that A gets. It would be equal to 10 plus 8 is 18, 18 plus 15 is 33. So here the total ca candy count or cookie count is equal to 33. Let's calculate for it for B. So it is equal to 20 plus 10 is 30, 30 plus 8 is 38. So if we calculate the maximum one out of these two, it would be equal to 38. And the unfairness degree for this particular distribution is 38. So it is better than the previous 53 one. So the answer gets updated to 38. Let's walk through another distribution. And let's assume here in this case, A gets 8 and 10, B gets 20, 8 and 15. So the total number of cookies that 8 gets is equal to 18. The total number of cookies that B gets is equal to 20 plus 15 is 35, 35 plus 8 is 43. And the maximum value out of these two happens to be equal to 43. So as per this, uh, 43 happens to be greater in value than the previous 38 one. Therefore, we are going to reject this distribution. Let's proceed ahead. And here in this case, A gets 8, 15 and 8 and B gets 20 and 10. So let's calculate the total candies that A gets. It 8 plus 8 is 16, 16 plus 15 is 31. And B gets is 20 plus 10, it is 30. So the maximum value among these two happens to be 31. And it is better than the previous 38 that we calculated. That means this is a better distribution we have identified minimum unfairness 31 as 31 so far. And what we need to do in the question, you have to identify all possible permutations because the question itself tells us to do and identify the minimum unfairness degree that exists. 
and the answer if you carefully see it will come out to be 31 and this is what we are exactly going to do we'll be using the backtracking approach to solve this question we'll identify all possibilities that are possible and then once we have identified a particular distribution possible then we will go and calculate the total sum that either each child gets and out of that distribution we will pick up the one that has the maximum value that will give us the unfairness for that particular distribution among all possible distributions we'll shoot for the one that gives us the minimum value and that becomes the answer to conclude it further let's quickly walk through the coding section and i'll be using my backtracking template to solve this question and you guys will yourself see that that template gets used in all backtracking questions I'm attaching the link to the sheet coding decoded backtracking sheet. So if you have not watched it up, do check it out. Let me just point you guys to the backtracking template of coding decoded. And if you go and check out coding decoded DSA vibration sheet, you will see that here has specified the one that says backtracking. If you go and click on this, you will yourself see that the first question is a template where I have talked about how backtracking actually operates and guys learn this template by heart because it gets applied everywhere in all backtracking questions if you will go through the subsequent ones you will also see that the same template is getting applied and again today the same template gets applied so here i've created the answer variable that will tell us the minimum unfairness distribution that exists across all the possible distributions and once we uh, go ahead and operate over the all possible distributions we will have the updated value in our answer variable we simply return that up so the question boils down to writing this backtracking helper method appropriately and here i have created four parameters to it the first one is a cookie distribution the second one is at what index am i currently operating over my cookies the k values is specified in the question the number of children that we have and uh, the next represents the array that basically tells the cookie distribution among those k children as the first thumb rule what do we need to write in all backtracking questions the abortion condition so in case my index length turns out to be equal to the length that means i have identified one possibility of distribution what do i do i am i have to identify the maximum value that exists across all the children who, who have got the cookies so I iterate over the cookie distribution array and I identify the maximum one out of all the all the values and once I have done that I compare it with my answer variable and I update my answer variable to math.minimum ans comma max and once I do that I simply return back and the rest of the part is the typical way of writing the backtracking question we iterate over starting from i equals to 0 i is less than k i plus plus we, you assign the index cookie to the ith child and you iterate over further using the backtracking in the recursive manner you pass in cookies you update your index to i plus one k remains the same and cookie distribution remains the same once you have you have out of this you simply cancel out the previously allocated cookie to the to, da to that particular children this is what we usually do in backtracking questions and let's submit this up accept it uh, with this we have completed the second question as well and let's shoot for solving more questions of the challenge now let's shoot for so solving the first question of the context which is calculate amount paid in taxes so i'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it by the presentation so let's quickly hop onto it and here this question exactly represent how taxes are calculated in india and we'll also follow the same protocol so let's quickly shoot for it let me just start the slideshow and take a pen lead code 3203 calculate amount paid in taxes so let's take the same example the total income of that particular person is 10 and the income slabs threshold for the first cases at 3 threshold you have to pay the tax of 50 percent for 7 income threshold you have to pay the tax for 10 percent for 12 income threshold you have to pay the tax of 25 percent and let's uh, calculate the total taxes that are to be paid by a person that holds an income of 10 units so let's get started so the first case uh, up till three units the tax percent is 51 so let's calculate the tax associated with this particular slab so 3 into 0.5 it gives us 1.5 
सो हाउ मच इनकम डज लाय विद इन द रेंज ऑफ नेक्स्ट लाभ द नेक्स्ट थ्रेश होल्ड अकर दैट सेवेन यूनिट्स एंड द टैक्स पर्सेंट फॉर दिस लाभ इज टेन पर्सेंट सो द टोट आउट ऑफ द टोटल इनकम वॉट इनकम यूनिट्स डज लाय इन दिस पर्टिकुलर स्लैब इट इज इक्वल टू सेवन माइनस थ्री सो सेवन माइनस थ्री गिव्स अस फोर सो दिस गिव्स अस फोर सो हाउ मच टैक्स डज वन नीड टू पे कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू दिस पर्टिकुलर स्लैब इट इज इक्वल टू फोर इन टू पॉइंट वन विच टर्न्स आउट टू बी इक्वल टू पॉइंट फोर and let's proceed ahead the next income slab occurs at 12 unit of threshold and how much income of this particular person will contribute will come under this particular slab it would be equal to 10 minus 7 remember 10 minus 7 not 12 minus 7 because the, the total the total income of that particular person is 10 units not 12 units so the total units that come under this particular slab turns out to be 10 minus 7 which is 3 so 3 into 0.25 gives you 0.75 and let's calculate it up it turns out to be in total sum of 1.5 plus 0.4 plus 0.75 so let me just calculate the sum so 5 will come here 7 plus 4 is 11 11 plus 5 turns out to be um, 16 So six comes over here and one goes to carry. So the total tax that needs to be pay, paid is two point six five units. And let's proceed ahead. Let's assume there were more slabs ahead of it. One let's assume at sixteen and the tax percent for this would have been seventy percent. Let's assume that for a second. But here there will be no contribution because all the income has been exhausted and the total units that will correspond to. For the incomes above twelve would be zero. Therefore, you need to abort as soon as you see that the income uh, income threshold is greater than the total income of the candidate. So keep this in mind, and we'll exactly follow the same step. Let's quickly shoot for the coding section and conclude it up. I'll be exactly doing the same things as I have just talked here. The time complexity of this approach would be order of n. I have created a tax variable that will actually store the total tax that I need to pay. I have created an I variable for iterating over my brackets array, and I have also created a variable that will tell me the previous threshold slab and initialize it to zero. So I go ahead and iterate over the loop using a while loop, and I am calculating the earning variable for current slab. So it is equal to math dot min the a uh, current slab threshold comma the total income that i have the minimum of these two ones identified i subtracted from the previous earning variable and this will tell me the total contribution corresponding to this part, the current slab under consideration once i have that value i multiply it with the taxes a uh, rate that i have and i divide it by 100 once i have the overall equated answer i add it to my taxes variable I update my previous earning equal to brackets at i comma zero index for the next iteration to happen. And in case uh, bracket at i comma zero index is greater than income, greater than equal to income, I break the process. Otherwise, I keep on iterating over the while loop. And with each iteration, I am incrementing the pointer value of i. Once I have calculated total taxes, I I simply return it up. So let's try and submit it. Accept it. The time complexity of this approach is order of n. And the space complexity constant time.